Hey, hey, everybody. Thank you for clicking episode six of this Gradient Mesh tutorial. And last episode, we left off with this mesh. And I was saying I was almost ready to fill in the color, or I was about to be filling in the color. And before we do that, I just want to touch up on some areas that I feel like could be a little smoother and still need to be worked. And one of the lines that I want to work is this one right here. Because this one isn't really supposed to come all the way down like this. And then it's just, it should be following a more centered path like this. It should just be a little bit more uniform. So we're going to just start out um, by just cleaning up some of this mesh. Just making it a little bit more even up here. Just giving everything a little bit more separation. And I just feel like it just, it could be a little cleaner. So after fixing that up a little bit, you could really see a, a difference in that line. And I think now that I move that line, I'm going to take this boundary, uh, especially from right here, and just move all these guys up to just be a little bit more uniform. Because this is going to the center of this kind of ball highlight right here. And then it just dips down. And so I'm just going to follow this general trend, this general straight line, imaginary line. gonna just fix it up just like that and then we're gonna start editing our anchors So I think that forehead is looking a lot smoother now. We should get a better representation of what the color is supposed to be like. Um, I'm just going to start fixing up some of this compression over here. I think just some of these points can be moved up um, and just separated a little bit. Just to, because, because not everything needs to be so close. I mean, you will have times where points do get close just like this. Um, but you can probably find a little bit of wiggle room to give something a little bit more smoother of a look. We are going for a smooth, real look. Um, too much um, detail and mesh, that's not going to give you the smoothest look unless you spend a lot of time blending all the color back and forth. See right here, we could probably do a little bit of separation. Everything is so just compressed. And you could really see how close this is for no reason, really. I mean, when you start seeing lines get this tight, we probably want to start going in and finding those little areas and tweaking them before they get out of control. So just a little extra space, just like this, should do the trick. Just for a little bit better of a look. And of course, we want to make sure we're fixing them and straightening them out.
Okay, so after all that editing, I think now the only line I'm just going to fix is this right here, these three, and then I'm going to start coloring. And after I color, I'm going to see my results, and then we will go from there and start smoothing out any problems we might run into. Um, I'm going to walk through the color and how I fill it in in just a little bit. But first, let's just finish up this last little bit of editing, and we'll get right to the color. Okay, so after all those little touch-ups at the last second, you can really see how much more clean the face is actually looking. And we're going to hope to see that that is going to improve the accuracy of our gradient mesh when we start to fill in the color. And of course, we're not going to be perfect, but for the, I'm hoping that we have a pretty strong foundation after we fill in the color. So... And what we're going to do is we're going to hit the uh, direct selection tool right before we hit the eyedropper tool. So now when we hit control on the keyboard, we could see that our tools jump back and forth. And that is how we're going to quickly fill in, or as quickly as possible, fill in this color of the face. What we're going to do is we're going to leave it on outline mode like that by control clicking the eyeball layer. And then we're going to go point by point. And we are going to fill in color by clicking the color right under the point. It's really as simple as that, uh, but it does get as tedious as that. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep filling in the color, and I'll stop fast-forwarding when i got to say something about the way I'm selecting the color. But other than that, we just got to keep clicking for a while, so I'll see you in a bit. I am going to quickly stop here. What I'm going to do here is, uh, since I have a... Uh, since I have an anchor point right on the eyebrow, I'm going to actually cover this area with the, uh, another mesh. So I'm going to blend skin to eyebrow to skin. So what I want is I don't want this to be eyebrow color. I kind of want it to be skin before eyebrow color. So even though this is on the eyebrow, I'm going to pull color from about right here. Just the same thing with this. I'm going to pull color from right about there. Same with this. Because I don't want that really dark brown of the eyebrow but I do want to be able to blend easily. So I'm going to all around it, just do that type of mindset. So all around the eyebrow, I'm going to select color with that mindset in the middle of the eyebrow on the edges. I'm just going to be pulling colors from the side. I'm not going to be selecting any color in the eyebrow. So now we have something like that. But other than that, I'm going to keep going. So again, I'm just going to stop right here. What we're going to do with the hair too, because we need uh, these points to be under the hair so we can blend with the hair. But I don't want that dark hair color on these points. So what I'm going to do is select the color right next to the hair on the skin. And that's going to give me my closest shade to blend with when I go uh, blend on with the hair shapes.
So as you can see, we're starting to fill in the color on our face. It's looking pretty good and we can see some of that streakiness like I was saying before, but we're gonna clean this uh, random color change up um, and eventually that's gonna be a nice smooth face. But you can really see almost even the shape of the face starting to come together already when we start to fill in this color. But we're gonna keep going. So over on these points, I don't want to select the eyelash color because that's not the color of this part of the face. That Right now I'm drawing behind the eyelashes. I'm drawing the skin behind the eyelashes. I do not want to create these points over here to be black. Over here I'm making sure I'm avoiding the purple because I don't want this light vibrant purple to be on my skin. These are going to be shapes or effects above the skin. So I'm going to avoid any of that color that's going to make my face seem a little bit strange. Sometimes when I'm coloring in points, points that are super close together, I'll select both of them and make them the same color. Because most of the time we don't want color change that close to each other. You'll see like a weird splotchiness to the mesh I and mean, that's what we're trying to avoid. And you can always fix it as we go and after we even finish coloring it, we can always go back and reblend. But it's just best to keep these things in mind while coloring to reduce the amount of work you have to do later. I'm constantly jumping back and forth between outline and the color mode because I always forget because there's just so many points at points it's so busy i kind of like lose my track of where i was filling in colors so i'm always checking So what I'm going to do for down here is I'm actually just going to select all these points and just make them the same color. Same thing for points like right here. I'm going to select all those. Just make them the same color when they're close to each other. gonna take all of these and we're gonna make them the same color they're all the white right there
So again, right on the lips, just like any other piece I was saying, we don't want that hard red of the lips, but we do want the closest color to blend. All right, so we're almost finished with coloring the face. We're just gonna take a small intermission there and then we will continue finishing the color of the face and then we will go over making corrections to the blend from there. But thank you for watching episode six and I'll catch you on the next one.